Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, thank you so much for joining me tonight for Achieving Abundant Life. I am your host. I am Pastor Perk, and um, I'm delighted that you chose to take out, you know, uh, a few minutes of your day to spend it with me as we peruse through God's Word. You know, just learning about some different things in life that are, that are going to help us achieve that abundant life that He promises that we can have. So, first, like I said, thank you so much for listening in. And if you're tuning in for the first time, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It means a great deal to be able to share God's Word with people that, that want to hear it, that want to listen. Um, because God's Word is life. It gives life to us for every situation that we may encounter, and um, it never ceases. It never ceases. God's Word is living. It's a living Word. So everything that we may need an answer for in life, it's right there in God's Word. And so my question is, how many of you remember the series that we're on right now? Say it again. That's right. That's right. We're on the series called Osmosis. We're embracing, we're preparing ourselves and uh, equipping ourselves to embrace the process of becoming. Because as we learned in the first part of this, nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. So with that being said, let us just kind of do a, um, a refresher just of you know what we have you know gone over so far, especially for those that are just joining us for the first time tonight. And again, I thank you so much for doing so. So from last week, one of the first things that we learned is that it must be intentional. Whatever it is that you're setting out to do, uh, it must be intentional. There needs to be some intent behind your work. Uh, whatever it is that you're moving forward in, whatever it is that you're looking to progress in, there has to be some intent. It, it has to be intentional. When drummers play, they have to play with intent in order for people to, to be able to feel them when, when they're playing. Uh, another thing that we learned was, in actuality, uh, a nuance of the word osmosis. And the one that, that we focused on was, that said, it said this. It said, the process of gradual or unconscious assimilation of ideas. Gradual. Not meaning it doesn't happen like that just because you snap your fingers or you, you know, mama say, mama sa, mama kusa. Just because you do all of that don't mean it's just going to happen. Okay? It's a gradual. It's, it's gradual. It's a process of, of gradual, unconscious assimilation of ideas. The, one of the other things that we learned was when we rush the process, we give up and abort what we set out to do. We do that. Why? Because we weren't expecting it. We weren't expecting the race to be how it was. You know, we weren't expecting it to be, you know, uh, tough and, and trying and, and all of that. We weren't expecting all of that. We were just expecting for us to just get off up in there and it just happened. But nothing just happens. It takes work. Then the last thing that we got off up into, uh, or one of the last things, we had a, quite a few points, but one of the last things we got off up into was when we go through the process, it grows us. It makes us stronger. Uh, it helps our faith, etc. All of that. When we're going through our process. It, it's 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 detrimental that we uh, be you know fully equipped, you know to 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 go on the race or or to run the race and to to do anything in the race because if not, then we'll give up. We'll give up. Um. Our faith has to be grown. So during that process, your faith will be grown. It will be it will be pushed. Um, you know, your belief, your 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 spirit, your soul, all of these different things will encounter something uh, that you may not be used to. May not be used to when it is when you're trying to do something, especially when it's something dealing with your call, when when it's something that God has placed in your life to do specifically. There's always going to be some type of challenge, something somewhere. You don't believe me? Then walk the walk because I can witness to you. Me, I can testify to you about the challenges that you'll face when you accept a particular calling in your life that God has set out for you to do. Okay, so we're going to just kind of continue on uh, in part two of this series. 
And tonight I'm going to be reading from the ESV version of the Bible. And, you know, make sure when you're listening in, don't just call in, just, you know, don't, don't just start listening just to listen to me, but actually have your word, you know, readily available because I don't want you to just hear what I say, but I want you to see what I say. Okay, because I'm, I'm not going off of my own, you know, uh, understanding of this. I'm just going just simply off of God's word. Okay. All right. So go with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 21. And we're going to look at verse five. Proverbs 21, verse five. This is what it says. Again, Proverbs 21, verse five. It says the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance. The plans of the diligent. That's those that are consistent in the process, not those that rush through the process, but those that are consistent in it. That means they're always doing something to work towards that particular end. Those the, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance. So those that are consistent in the things that they're doing, in those plans, in those things that they're putting together, uh, walking and working in their call, you know, or, or in the marketplace, you know, or in their communities, what have you. The plans of those people, they lead to abundance. They lead to abundance. Consistency leads to abundance. Okay? That's the first part. Now let's look at the second part. But everyone who is hasty comes to poverty. How many of you know someone that is always looking for the get rich quick scheme. They're looking for that thing that that's that's gonna make them rich quick. Like they don't want to waste no time. They don't want to work towards nothing. It's just that hey, I just want to do this one thing and that's just it. Bam, money in the bank. Okay, look at what this says. But everyone who is hasty comes to poverty. Now remember, one of the points that we brought up last week was about the fact that when we rush through the process, we we tend to abort. What we set out to do because we're rushing. We're not going through the process. It says, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. Let's look at that word hasty. What does it actually mean? Hasty. Done or acting with excessive speed or urgency. Hurried. Now, what was one of the points we brought up last week? When you rush, you tend to abort. What it is that you set out to do because you're rushing it because you want it to be quick, fast in a hurry. I love when the word of God proves something for me when I don't have to do it, because some people feel like, man, if you, if you get your all up into it, man, and you just push, 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 then it's going to come to pass. Well, according to God's word, if you push too much, if you push too fast, then it'll only leave you worse off than when you started. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be worse off <laughs> than when I started. So I want to tell you, I'm going to say to you, the person that's listening right now, slow down. Slow down. Because the Bible tells us clearly that the vision is yet for an appointed time. And, and, and it lets us know that when it shows up, it's going to be right on time. Isn't that, isn't that weird? Even though we want the vision to happen quickly, the Bible clearly tells us that even though it tarries, it doesn't tarry. Right. OK. Um, remember, in this series, we're, we're dispelling the myth that things just happen. There's no spiritual osmosis. OK, nothing just happens. So let's look at Second Chronicles 15, verse seven. And I got quite a few scriptures. We're not going to go all over, all, all over all of them tonight, but we're going to dispel this because. I believe that if we can dispel it, it'll break some things off of the believer to help them understand that all of this is a process. God simply wants us to go through the process of becoming and embrace the process, embrace the process. And, in, 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 and as we can get ready to conclude this series, I have something awesome that I'm going to share with you guys about embracing the process uh, that will be a testimony from my wife and, and myself, uh, you know, concerning our home buying process, you know, of, of a new house that, that, that we were uh, purchasing. So I'm, I'm going to share that with you. But Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, I'm sorry, not Corinthians, Second Chronicles 15, verse 7. Look at what it says. But you, take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, 
for your work shall be rewarded. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Okay, but I know some of you are probably still saying, well, things do just happen. Okay, well, this is, look at what the Bible says. But you take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. For your work. Now, if things just happen, then it wouldn't be any work, right? But you said we have faith. You're right. Absolutely. You have faith. Trust God and you believe for every situation in your life. I say that every week. But the Bible says faith without work is dead. The Bible doesn't say you, you sit down and you chill out and you be still and something's going to happen for you. It's telling you that in your believing, in having faith, for whatever it is that you're setting out to do, you have to work. You have to work. You have to. Faith and work work go hand in hand. Why? Why do, why, why do you say this? You're saying, well, Pastor Perk, why, why are you saying that? Look, the Bible says that you trust in the Lord with all your heart. You lean not to your own understanding. Then it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll direct your path. Okay. Now, here's an example. You're working towards something. You're having faith about it. You're trusting God in all your moves, everything that you do, the plans you're making, uh, the, budget you're, the budgets you're creating, uh, the people you're getting involved. The Bible says he'll direct your path. So you're, you're trusting in him to do all of that. And along the way, while you're working, he's directing your path where you may want it to go this way with something specific. He directs you to go that way. And then as you're getting that way, because you're still acknowledging him, you're still keeping your mind stayed on him because you're acknowledging him in everything that you do. Once you get up there, then when you want to work with that person, he directs you to go to that person. So in all your ways, you acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. That's why faith without work is dead. But do not let your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. Okay, the Bible is still dispelling the myth that there is a such thing as spiritual osmosis. As I said last week, even with salvation, even with, uh, um, you know, becoming a follower of, a, of, of Christ, it takes something to do. It takes you doing something. It takes your confession. It takes what, what you know, what, what they call in church, a confession of your faith. It takes a confession. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. It takes that. That's work, even though it's not not uh, you know an extensive amount of work. It yet is work none the least, because you have to do something. So again, nothing just happens. Okay, here's another verse. Habakkuk chapter two, and I know you guys know this verse. Habakkuk chapter two, starting at verse two, uh, on through verse three. This is what it says, and the Lord answered me. Write the vision. Now, look. Now, look. This is it, 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 this does not say, and Roderick answered me. <laughs> That's not what this says. This says, and the Lord answered me. Write the vision. Okay? Hmm. That's doing something, right? See, I want you guys to understand. I'm not talking about, it's, gonna, it's not going to always be some big, huge work to be done. But it's going to take something. Because what if you don't write the vision? What if you don't do that simple thing, like write it out? Think about that. Write the vision. That's the first thing. Look, make it plain on tablets. Write the vision and make it plain. So he may run who reads it. So even after you do something, those that you are doing it with, then it's something for them to do. So he may run who reads it. So write the vision, make it plain, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits it appointed time. It hastens to the end. Now, we've remembered what we've said about that word hastens. You know, haste, well, up there we, we did hasty, but this word right here, this is where it comes from. 
Now, this is one of the uh, derivatives of that word, hastens. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. So what am I saying to you? As you're working towards an end, the thing that God already has set up for you, it's rushing itself towards you. So look, okay, so what, what they're simply saying is this. If you're not in the place that you're supposed to be in, by the time this vision is supposed to get to where you're supposed to be, you miss it, right? Okay, you're saying, no, nah, that can't be true. All right. Now, I, have, I haven't ridden uh, public transportation in God knows how long. But I do know that there is a schedule for every bus. Uh, the Metropolitan Transit Authority, they have a schedule for every bus to arrive somewhere at a particular time. Now, um, you may need to catch a particular bus. But if you are not in the place that you're supposed to be at, when it's time for that bus to come, you're going to miss the bus, which prevents you from getting to your other destination on time. Now, you knew that you had some preparation to do the day before. So why didn't you do the work to make sure that you were at the bus stop on time? You know, get on the phone, get on the Internet, get on your, 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 your smartphone, get on the, uh, and find out what time will my bus be at point B when it crosses at point one. You know, 1A, 1A. W what time will the bus be there so that I can make sure that I'm, I'm up earlier working towards that particular end? That means if I got to get dressed a little earlier, take my shower a little earlier, eat a little earlier, or whatever it is that I need to do in order to make sure that I am there at that point before the bus comes. So says this. You put in that work before time because the vision is is rushing itself to get to you but you got to make sure that you're in that place where it's going to meet you at because if not you're going to miss it please trust me it, it's visions and, and 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 particular things in your life they come in, in cycles they come in seasons and you may miss something because you didn't want to put in the work and that's all i'm simply saying don't not put in the work because you will risk missing something. And then look, if it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Now, that, that goes right back to the same point. You know, I remember when I did used to ride public transportation and I would get to the bus stop before the bus would get there, and because I may have stood there 10 minutes, I started getting frustrated and bothered because I'm like, man, I wish this bus come on. But see, my, my, see what I didn't know, see, sometimes I didn't always get on the phone and call and check on the bus to see what time it would come. So sometimes I would just go out there, not knowing that the bus was on its correct schedule. See, it's not going to just rush because I wanted to get there when I wanted to get there. It has an appointed time. There is an appointed time. So I would be out there waiting on the bus, be about 10 minutes in, and then I would get frustrated and bothered, like, man, I wish this bus come on. Man, I wish this bus come on. Not knowing that the bus was on its way, but because I put in the work before, I just kind of got there before it did. And guess what? It was not delayed. It was, in fact, right on time. So, still again, Nothing just happens. All right. Um, look, let's look at this last verse. Proverbs 24, 27. Look at what it says. Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field. And after that, build your house. Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field. And after that, 
build your house. Mm. I hope there is some preacher, some pastor listening to that right there. Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field. And after that, build your house. Everybody wants to preach in the church. But if we look at this from that side, prepare your work outside. Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field. And after that, build your house. Do the work out there. Do the work in the field. After that, build your house. Nothing just happens. Pastors want to, to uh, open churches. No field work done. No outside work done. But just left one church and just wanted to open their, open their church. But have never done any field work at all. No outside work at all. The Bible says, build your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field. And after that, build your house. The word of God, it continues to prove itself over and over and over and over and over again. All I'm simply saying is, when will we um, take on the full understanding that God's word remains true? But see, this is what, this is what we're going to do. We're going to fight against the fact that nothing just happens. That God doesn't just give us just because. He doesn't have something to come and meet us at a particular place just because we want it there. So what are we going to do? Are we going to continue to kick against the prick? You know, we're going to continue to fight against what we know is true. Concerning God's word. Listen, everything that I read you tonight, I didn't write it. Um, in fact, I, I had I had nothing to do with it at all. I wasn't even there when it was written. So, I'm just saying, can we bring ourselves uh, to an understanding that nothing just happens? And go ahead and put in that work so that we can be ready when whatever it is that God has prepared for our life comes. God, God is making the vision. He's making it come. It's, it's hasting towards us. Let's just get ourselves in line. So that we can be ready when it when it gets there to us. Listen, let's pray. Um, because I, I know you guys understand it. And it's not nothing to fight about. It's not nothing to fight against. It's God's word. Have I always been there? No. No. But guess what? I want to prevent you from experiencing something that you don't have to. Alright, let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for every person listening. God, I thank you for every vision and, and, and the purposes that you have on their life. For the destiny that they're getting ready to go and meet. That she be there willing and waiting when they arrive. Father, touch our hearts and our minds. Help us to understand better, God, that there is a work to be done. Even for your kingdom. Even for your, your people. The world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. The world wants to see us. They want to see that light. They want to see that light in this dark place. Father, we just ask you to just to touch our hearts and our minds to help us understand nothing just happens. 
But everything happens by your will. Everything happens by your way. Faith without work is dead. So increase our faith, God, that our work increase. God, we're going to get it right. God, we're trusting and believing in you to take care of it all, God, because we want to keep our minds stayed on you. To every vision, God, let it not tarry. Let it be right there waiting for us when we get to that destination that we're, that we're, that we're seeking out to get to. For everything we're wanting to do in ministry, in the marketplace, in our communities, in our relationships, in our families. Let us understand, God, it takes work to get those things where they need to be. And Father, we'll be forever grateful. And give your name all glory, honor, and praise. These things we pray and we thank you so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this. Thank you for joining me for the broadcast tonight. I'm, my, my mind is just, and my, my heart is just uh, in, a, in an overwhelmed place. Um, just about all of this, uh, because I know that it, it's important, you know, for us to understand really what it takes in order to see some things come to pass in our lives. And I know we're all frustrated and we have struggles and all of that. And we're just asking God to change and switch some things around. So, guys, listen, please join me back here next week and invite somebody because this is a word for everybody. And um, let, invite them back so that they can hear uh, what it is that, that God is saying about this particular thing as we venture into part three of this series, Osmosis, embracing the process of, a be, of becoming. Listen, guys, until then, as I always say, have faith, trust God, and believe. For every situation in your life. It's been Pastor Perk. Peace.